Chavalier. Why does that Cavalier look mad? Hello, my name is The Jordan, your coach of the Virginia Vikavolts, and this is the finals of the VBLS Season 4 VGC Draft League. I am against the New York Ninetales, coached by Sam Axe, and I'm happy to see him here as my opponent. Uh, he and I were prep partners this season. We advised each other on a couple of matches, and uh, we can't advise each other on this one. Um, so I wish him a strong second place in this hashtag Friends Finals. Um, but I took a look at Sam's team, and he's got a ton of great options, but I think this is a pretty fair matchup. I made a team that I I was reasonably happy with and then I had a, a bit of a mental breakdown not really but I tweaked and I retweaked this team because I saw all these options um, that that Sam has you know how difficult it'll be to kill this Umbreon um, how good Seismitoad is into most of my team um, just how strong Metagross and Salamence can be with a helping hand they Oko my trick room setters and there's nothing I can do about it um, I just thought about all these options and I kept tweaking this team what I have left is kind of a Frankenstein monster of different tools and contingencies for different things that I think he could bring. I think this squad will keep me in the game against virtually everything Sam X could be bringing this time, um, though I think it generally suffers in terms of cohesiveness and like general power level. Kind of core members of my team are absent, Heatran, Latius, Gastrodon, um, but uh, I believe the Escavalier and the Thunderous have what it takes to win this one for me. So I'm going to get into my strategy. I'm going to try to dig into pretty big detail. Um, there will be a stream of the finals. Um, so if you're here seeing it from my perspective, then you're interested in the strategy, right? Um, so I'll try to dig into it. Um, so if you look at Sam's roster and mine, I have the fastest mons on either side of the field, and I have the slowest mons on either side of the field. I have a much more dynamic team in terms of speed. I want to take advantage of that. I brought both ends of my speed spectrum, and I think Escavalier can win this. Um, it has a fair matchup against most of the things that Sam X has, um, but what it also has going for it is surprise factor. Uh, Escav has not been my go-to for much of this season. It's it's disappointed. I haven't just haven't put it in a lot. Um, he trained as 18. KO's throw is 15, and Escavalier has 3. Uh, so I believe, slash hope, that Sam X will be focusing more on the more consistent members of my team. And if he just brings the Rotom and says that's enough if Escavalier comes, it is. You know, Rotom can Oko a Dynamax Escavalier with an Overheat, no problem. Um, but if it's just the Rotom, I can deal with it, because I can manipulate the game state um, to my advantage. If I have Trick Room up, Escavalier is going first. It's using the Max Geyser. Escavalier is one of the only, you know, fighting uh, mons with a weird water coverage move. So it can Max Geyser the Rotom Heat, and that's an Oko. Um, if it's Dynamax is fine, it'll do at least half. Um, but most importantly, Escavalier will be setting rain with a max water move, so I'll be able to survive that fire move. Um, Salamence, I think he'll bring physical ments. That would be a smarter move into my team because I have more specially defensive mons, um, because then he'll gain access to a dark move, which is really good against me. Um, then he'll have like dark and flying and ground and rock, and those would be really good against basically everything I've got. The one reason he would bring a, a special Salamence is then it would give him access to a fire move just to beat the Escavalier. So if he does that, this match becomes a lot harder for me, but um, I do live one uh, Salamence Max Flare. Uh, it does 95% back, and I can only deal like 40% 40, 40 back with a Steel Spike, um, but I could beat a, a physical Salamence with a Scavalier, with a Steel Spike boost, and most importantly with Coaching boost. spoiler alert. Um, but Escavalier is in, in, is in decent shape against the Metagross. You know, it does good damage with knockoff. I hit him super effectively. He doesn't have a fire move. Um, I can I can survive all of these physical attackers that I think Samax will be bringing because I'll have Steel Spike boosts and Coaching boosts, and Escavalier is just pretty durable as is. Um, so I think Escavalier can fight them all with the right conditions. Um, you'll notice a little bit of speed investment lastly on Escavalier. That's because um, under Trick Room, I want Throw to go before Escavalier, um, which it needs uh, minimum speed throw, and then like six more points on Escavalier, and it's going one speed faster, so I can coach the Escavalier and give it 50% more attack before it goes. Um, so that's the plan there. Um, Throw has definitely been, you know, the surprise standout of the season. You've seen it if you've seen the other vids. Um, but if the attention's on Throw, he's going to subvert expectations by being very supportive, leftovers, and coaching. So, um, virtually maximum physical defense investment here. I can live a lot of things. I can't live the Salamence Airstream. 
um, more than 60% of the time. But, uh, you know, a lot of things, Heatran, not Heatran, Thro will be able to survive. And it does dish a little bit of damage here and there, even without investment. A Storm Throw is kind of a cool move that he has access to. It's a fighting type move that always critical hits. So if he's building up his own uh, defense boost with Metagross max steel spikes, I'll just crit right through them. Um, and other things with, uh, you know, if he uh, curses with Umbreon and has defense boost that way, then I'll crit through them. And Storm Throw is not by itself the answer to Umbreon, but it's definitely part of my answer. It'll deal half, and Umbreon would have to keep recovering its its health just to keep surviving. Um, so we'll see. Uh, throw under Trick Room, Rock Slides, going really fast, and have a good chance of, of a flinch. That could be really helpful, um, giving Escavalier one more turn to go on its rampage. Um, but the goal is to make a Scavalier unkillable against all of Sam Axe's physical threats. So we have the Trick Room abusers uh, in Escavalier and Throw. I'm going to talk about the Trick Room setter, but Oranguru is kind of uh, riding the line between slow and fast this time around. I want to talk about my other win con. The other way I can win this game, deal out a lot of damage, is the Thunderous Therian. Um, Thunderous is a monster. It is huge 145 special attacks, that which I maxed out. Um, my thinking here is that I have the speed advantage on Salamence by one point. There is nothing that Salamence could incrementally outspeed by going with a speed boosting nature. So that you let the absolute max speed Salamence would just be one speed under my Thunderous. So I think the fastest he's going to go is, is uh, 252 uh, points invested, but not um, speed boosted. So I think I'll get him by at least one point, uh, perhaps 20 or 30 points. Um, so that's a bit of a risk that I'm taking on my part. He could outspeed me, um, but at 153, I'm quite fast. I'm faster than max speed Rotom, uh, and that extra points of damage really helped me in some calcs like Max Darkness. Max Darkness is an Oko on Metagross. Now, Metagross is like the big Dynamax threat of the entire game, so uh, you know it, it'll survive. It, I'll deal a little bit over, or over half. And then, worryingly, I could proc a weakness policy. Metagross, one of the most well-known users of the weakness policy, uh, getting double attack after I max Darkness hit. But here's the thing. I raw live the Metagross max Hailstorm because I have my Ice Resist Berry. Um, so I, I looked at it from the opponent's perspective. He's got to bring Ice over Rock um, from Metagross because Ice would hit Latius and Thunderous and Cottony, and Rock would be to just hit Thunderous and Weavile. And I just don't see him doing that. Yeah, Latius is a way more important uh, member to hit super effectively um, that I bring up virtually every week. So I feel like he'll bring Ice, and I have the Ice Resist, so I'll raw live. And if I'm Dynamaxed, I could live it even if he, if you know, I proc the Weakness Policy because if I live it. Uh, usually, then I double my health and he doubles his attack and it cancels out. So I'll be able to live and I'll be able to threaten that Oko on turn two with Max Darkness. Um, the main thing that stops this is the Ninetales. I don't really see him bringing Ninetales. I've got two really strong steel types to get rid of it, um, but Ninetales could eat my Ice Resist Berry with an Icy Wind or Blizzard and then it could make Thunderous slower than Metagross. So I'm not bringing Thunderous if, if I see the Ninetales, uh, but uh, in other situations, in most other situations, Thunderous is immune to Rotom's electric attacks with the Volt Absorb. Um, it's got Discharge, uh, which are all that good spread damage, um, with the, the Telepathy Oranguru. So Oranguru is immune to moves that would hit it because it hits everybody. Um, I've got three Protects here on um, Thoreau, Escavalier, and Weavile, so they could all protect while uh, Thunderous does Discharge to just spread the damage and spread the paralysis. Um, but lastly, Grass Knot is the tool specifically for Seismitoad. Um, that is a one hit KO right there. Max Overgrowth onto a Dynamax Seismitoad um, because it's four times effective. Um, so lastly, I have Taunt. A fast Taunt is very important to shutting down this Umbreon. I couldn't bring Prankster Taunt, unfortunately, because Umbreon, as a dark type, is immune to Prankster shenanigans. But a fast Taunt will stop Umbreon from yawning me, from cursing, from uh, healing, from all of the insufferable status moves that it can inflict upon me. Um, so that could be an important part of beating this Umbreon. I still think I'm going to need to 2v1 this Umbreon at the end to beat it in most circumstances, uh, but Thunderous is part of keeping the Umbreon at bay. It is part of destroying Seismitoad, beating the Metagross, dealing solid damage to the rest with Discharge. 
So I hinted what Oranguru is up to. Um, not only is it setting Trick Room for these two, and it's very beefy. Um, it can live a Life Orb Metagross Max Steel Spike. It can live a Salamence Max Darkness. You know, it's one move that he has access to that would be super effective against Oranguru. Um, I could even, if he was uh, special Salamence, I think I could live a Life Orb. I could definitely live a Life Orb, but I could live a um, Helping Hand Boosted Max Airstream. I'm gonna double check that. I think I think I saw that calc though. Um, so a lot of the time, Orangur is gonna be able to set Trick Room, especially with Weavile right there to fake out support. Um, with Cottony uh, next to Orangur some of the time uh, to just threaten a lot of chaos. Um, but Orangur is gonna be able to set Trick Room, but also with the telepathy, uh, be able to instruct Thunderous and just do two discharges. Here, paralysis for everybody. Uh, and then lastly, I have brought two grass moves just for this seismitude. That's a fair amount of respect to put on a Seismitoad, um, but I think it's got a good matchup here, and so the ability to deal four times effective damage into it is pretty good. You'll notice a bit of speed investment here. I'm up to 89, so if Cottony is Cotton Sporing, which halves the speed of my opponents, um, then Oranguru becomes... is it Oranguru or Nguru? I'm gonna use both. Um, but that's just enough speed that if my opponent's speeds are halved, then I'm faster than his fastest mod. I'm faster than the Ninetales. So I can... Um, I can lead Cottony or, uh, or Nguru, and no, I'm gonna go with Oranguru. That just feels better. Um, like Oranguru, but Orangutan. Um, I can lead this, and it seems very odd. You know, it's a very odd duo. They're both supports, usually. And then I can decide, based on his lead, whether I want to go fast or slow. Um, so Cottony can just, just do assorted mischief while Oranguru sets Trick, trick Room, um, or it can Cotton Spore, so that Oranguru goes first and lay the groundwork for Thunderous um, to sweep in fast mode. Um, that's a mix-up. I think more of the time, I really want to win this in Trick Room. I think Throw and Escavalier are extremely powerful, um, especially together. Um, but Oranguru is going to be in both sides of the coin. Um, I, mean, I, I had to look for a couple of leads that don't involve Oranguru, because basically everything I would do starts with, with uh, this little monkey. So that's Oranguru. It's the Trick Room setter this time, but it's also a important part of my fast mode offense. And that seems a little odd to say because Oranguru is not terribly strong or fast, uh, but it does have the help of Cottony a lot of the time, and that's what I want to dig into. Uh, Cottony can do Cotton Spores, so Oranguru becomes the first after a Cotton Spore. Um, but it also does Fake Tears. Fake Tears doubles the output of my special attackers, which are the these two. And so uh, Fake Tears plus Oranguru Energy Ball is an Oko on Seismitoad. Uh, doubled, tripled Psychics are, are good damage, as it turns out. Um, so Cottony is just a general soldier of mayhem, mayhem here, turning the dials on speed, on attack. Um, and then it's got, if Samax sees a speed control, like, if he brings Scarf Rotom, then he's just like, he's gonna get to go first. Um, but I can switcheroo this Lagging Tail, so a uh, priority swap of the items. Next turn, whoever's holding the, the, the item I just traded with um, will be going last, uh, period, right? even under Trick Room. And so if I see a situation in which I can't win the Speed War, then Cottony Lagging Tail could be really, really, really effective. Um, because it allows even a Scavalier, even if I don't get the Trick Room, then a Scavalier can be going before something that it needs to beat. Um, so I could Lagging Tail the Rotom. Um, I really want to Lagging Tail the Metagross, because if I remove its weakness policy, then I really, uh, remove a lot of the, you know, the big threat factor that it has. Um, I can safely attack it with three Pokemon here that have Dark moves. Um, but. Uh, the last piece is Encore. Encore I've never brought on Cottony before, but it's uh, it's wonderful mischief here. It forces them to repeat the use the move they last used, and because Cottony is a prankster and it's going with priority, then I can uh, force anything to protect again after it protected. And protect is a move that's not that doesn't work on consecutive uses most of the time. Um, so I can screw up anything that protected last turn. If Rotom goes for a nasty plot, then I can force it to keep nasty plotting while I deal with it. Um, I could encore next to virtually anything Meowstic does, if it's setting screens or if it's... Um, 
uh, you know, taunting or uh, whatever, uh, it basically doesn't want to reuse its moves because they're all kind of support moves. And so uh, I could shut down the Meow Stick with an Encore. Uh, so Cottony is the agent of mayhem here. Uh, it's not part of the plan A, but it really could help. If I decide that the fast mode is the way to go because um, I can't get Trick Room up, then uh, Cottony Thunderous, Cottony Oranguru with Thunderous in the back, that's a big part of the plan B. So last move, last is Weavile. Weavile uh, keeps coming to the to the six. It keeps making the squad, but never doing anything. Um, this is his last chance. It just has a unique combination of traits that I always seem to want, which is a really fast fake out, faster than his fake out user, so I can shut down anything on turn one unless it Dynamaxes. I'll just have to make that call correctly. Um, and then I have wonderful stab options. Ice and Dark, really strong here. Look at this triple axle. Uh, Salamence intimidates me, so I go to two-thirds of my normal attack, and I still Oko the Dynamax Salamence with a triple axle. Now I do need to hit the three triple axles, which happens 72% of the time. I will take those odds, um, because if he's doing a helping hand setup with Salamence, I cannot stop the Trick Room, or, or I cannot um, stop him from Okoing my Oranguru and stopping my Trick Room. So I need, in that case, if I see Salamence next to a user of Helping Hand, I have to uh, click Triple Axle and hope and pray because there's nothing that Salamence can do without that Helping Hand to Oko um, the Oranguru. So I need to hope, um, well actually no. Uh, so unless he was like a Scarf Crunch, no, even Scarf Crunch with a Helping Hand wouldn't get it done. So Weavile is the answer to the Salamence, at least 72% of the time. But look at these huge calcs here. I have a chance to Oko the Togetic. You see I'm calcing for uh, only max HP but not max defense. I think he'll be bringing max special defense um, because I have more special attackers than physical attackers. Um, if not, then you know, maybe I do 95%. It's possible, it's fine, I can deal with that. Um, but Weavile is huge damage here. It's huge damage on the Meow Stick, that's a chance to one-hit KO. Uh, and then it's good damage on the Metagross. Metagross is a lot bulkier. I'm not gonna just fire off the Throw Chop into Metagross because I don't wanna proc the weakness policy. So I'll be doing that with a move strong enough that I could two-hit KO it, which is Thunderous Max Darkness. Um, but if I've already removed the weakness policy, or if I've dealt with it elsewise, if I learn that it's a Soulfest Metagross, which could definitely be an option here, uh, then I can Throw Chop it very hard. Uh, Throw Chop's got some other mixed utility here. It can shut off Umbreon Snarls, which would be uh, very dangerous into Thunderous. Um, so they can't use like sound moves after you Throw Chop them. So uh, no Snarls for Umbreon. Uh, but Weavile's here is a uh, very frail, with the Focus Sash, uh, offensive piece. It might just come in the in the middle game. It might not be part of my lead, but uh, if I've manipulated the game uh, and if I just need some revenge KOs, Weavile could do it. It does have the Protect, which I can rarely find room for. I really wanted Taunt on this guy. I had to put it on Thunderous. Uh, but Protect helps me discharge with Thunderous next to uh, Weavile, which is pretty helpful. So that's the team. Um, you'll see... <laughs> Uh, this Heatran was a cornerstone of the whole plan until the end when I realized that most of the time if I'm scaling up, this is an iron defense body press Heatran, so it could gain you know, massive defense and become unkillable. Um, with steel spike boost, it gets further defense and then body press, which uses my defense stat in its attack, then it just becomes brutally, brutally strong. But I realized that a lot of the time um, that I'm doing this with Heatran, that I would prefer to use a Scavalier. The exception, of course, is fire moves. I've left this version of the team, which finally got rid of Heatran, my, my favorite guy, very sad to see him, see him not on the team, um, but uh, without Heatran, I'm very weak to fire moves, so I just have to hope that he doesn't pile on the fire moves, but um, most of the time, scaling up with the Scavalier is better. A Scavalier only has one weakness, um, Metagross and Salamence both have ground, and just, I, I won't be able to become unkillable when they've got four times effective moves when virtually everyone does. Um, Samex has told me that he thinks Max Quake is very good into my team, so I think he's gonna bring it. It's only good against, it's only super effective against Heatran, but it gives him the special defense boost, which really helps him against all my special attackers. I believe he will be bringing Metagross with Ground and Ice and Steel. Uh, I believe he will be bringing Physical Ments with Ground, um, I believe he will be bringing Seismitoad with ground. I'm not going to get all of those predictions right, uh, but these are all big threats, and so 
Heatran didn't have a lot of winning matchups among those three, and uh, I'm gonna hope that Escavalier can pull this one out. This is your time, Escavalier. I believe in you. You are an incredibly strong Pokemon. Uh, you're obviously amazing in rain when uh, your fire weakness is negated, but I think you're a strong enough Pokemon that you can handle all these neutral matchups. Oh, a big scary steel, Metagross? I am the bigger, scarier steel uh, with the dark coverage to take you out. Um, that is the plan. Um, <laughs> Who knows what's going to happen? Uh, this will be one of my very first matches ever on the actual game. Uh, you'll see uh, we're cutting over to um, Sword and Shield, Pokemon Sword and Shield, which I wasn't buying because they didn't make the game hard enough for us Pokemon Masters over here. But, uh, but I bought it because traditionally finals are played on the real game, on the cartridge rather than the simulator. Um, and hopefully there aren't any snafus of me not knowing how to play on 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 Sword and Shield correctly, but um, we're gonna be cutting over to that, and uh, I'm gonna be tense as hell, but we got a team here. We got a team that I think can take this champion. Let's see it. I'm gonna be looking down at my controller and hoping I don't misclick the whole game. I think we're rolling. All right, Mr. Meaty Thigh, AKA Sam. Um, all right, I need finals. I, I can just take a look at them, right? Yeah, and everyone gets to see. Oh, that I swapped Megahorn for knockoff. That was a key addition. I, I just don't want to lose to that Umbreon, so I'd rather over prep for it. Um, Max Bug is an Oko on the Umbreon. Yeah. I'll deal with a Metagross matchup that relies me using uh, Weevil and Thundee. That's okay with me. All right, everything's timed. GLHF. Okay, wait, wait, do we call all six? Metagross, Salamence, Umbreon, uh, and uh, South Scythe, so no Togetic. Yeah, we basically called it. We basically called the whole thing. Um, let's see, delete you. Okay. So it's it's all between the Weevil Warangroot, um, which more, which guarantees Trick Room in more situations versus the Thunderous Warangroot, which is more flexible, but I do lose Trick Room sometimes. I think we're gonna do this. I don't, I wanna do my best version of this strat, but I want a flexible version in game one. Um, because things will go wrong um, and I leave throw out of the game and maybe uh, Sam has to still prep for an offensive throw in game two. This is not the best version of the strat, right? Throw coaching for Escavalier is really the best version, but I'm gonna try the flexible version. There's really very few things Sam X can possibly do to prevent Trick Room. Um, he can helping hand max move. I'm and that's about it. Um, I can miss, if he does that, I can still stop Trick Room if I hit my triple axles instead. Metagross Salamence. So it's, it's, if it's a Scarf Bulldoze, then he bulldozes into Metagross Weakness Policy. I think I want to fake out the Salamence because I think it's frequently a bulldoze setup. Now Sam is, is he knows that this is the, uh, what it looks like and he could be doing some wacky subvert expectations thing, but I just can't, I can't assume until I see, right? I just have to, I, I live any Metagross max move, period. Um, so, let's try it. So I get Trick Room. So the swap into Umbreon is challenging. He Dynamaxes Metagross from turn one. So I live every possible Metagross move here. He doesn't have a bug move or a dark move. I live a Life Orb Salamence Dynamax Steel Spike. So this is like an F a Valiant effort. He's gonna get a lot of damage, but I'm gonna get the Trick Room. He might have abandoned a Bulldoze Weakness Policy Metagross strat. We shall see. 
take me down to Sash. So now it's just whether I preserve the Weavile, give up a turn of momentum. So swapping into Thunders is a reasonable switch in, but I don't want to eat Umbreon Snarls, so we probably swap into a Scavalier, preserve Weavile for Salamence, and then just do kind of meaningless chip damage. Um, crap, I'm gonna run out of time. Kangaroo. Time, shit. Kind of do kind of meaningless chip damage. Please, Steel Spike. I'll take a Steel Spike into Oranguru. This is okay. I'll take whatever you got for me, Metacross. Oh, he eats the White Herb. And I reveal Energy Ball, um, so he knows. I should live that. So we are outliving the Dynamax, question mark? So I destroy the Umbreon so that I, I am in better shape with Thunderous in the back. It's pretty bold to Dynamax Umbre uh, to Scavalier here, because I'm going to eat an Intimidate. But I think this is the best move for our future health and happiness. All right, let's look at Escavalier versus Umbreon with Max Bug. Oh, it should be way more than enough. I could, I could, uh, uh, shit. I could Mega Horn instruct. I have no idea what's gonna happen now. But I leave the option to Dynamax of Thunderous. How is it so bulky? Okay, well, I'm happy. How is it so bulky? Is it Max Fizdef? How could it live two of these? What am I missing? That doesn't match up with my calcs at all. How did it live two Mega Horns? What am I Oh, he has a Steel Spike boost. So we ate this Dynamax pretty handily. We're leaning on a, a Dynamax Thunderous to beat the Metagross. I should Oko it actually here. Non-Dynamax Metagross? I feel okay about that. I don't want to eat the hit. I'm, I'm gonna have to accept. Um, oh man, I have no time. Info, info, why? Trick Room, two turns of Trick Room. I'm gonna send in the Weavile, and if it gets hit, fine. I'm just gonna be avoiding getting put to sleep. That's, I think, all I can do. And the time is so brutal. <laughs> and so I eat a Snarl here, and so I lose the Weavile, which is pretty unfortunate. We have an ally switch Metagross. Of course we do. And we have a Recover Spam on Brian. Cool. So I can fake out the Metagross, and there's not really a lot you can do about that. What I don't want to do is eat a Snarl as Thunderous comes in. So I have to just sit here and lose my Mons. Man, just the Metagross go burr. So I eat a Snarl, lose the Weavile. I'll bring on the Substitute, wow. 
with a physical defense boost. So I'm I, so I'm happy that I preserved my Dynamax for the Thunderous. But Umbreon is just absolutely brutal Pokemon here. So, so I really don't want to eat the, um, I, I really don't want to proc the weakness policy. <laughs> it's an unkillable Umbreon. So I need to taunt the Umbreon, and in so doing, open up Thunderous to eating a big hit from Metagross and revealing Yachi Berry. So he just Steel Spiked, he became unkillable. He lived two Escavalier Mega Horns. So I eat an Ice Punch, I use up my Berry. But hopefully I stop a Yawn here. All right, Thunderous and Escav. I believe in you because I have no choice. It's four to two, my last two guys here. Escavalier has, has had his White Herb eaten. So an, an ally switch from the Metagross is very unfortunate, if real, um, if that's what he goes for. Um, but I just have to, you can't just read ally switch every turn. What are you going to do about that? Let's go Thunderous! Please do not ally switch. For the love of God, do not ally switch. It's an ally switch snarl would, would uh, probably win him the game this turn. I think he's ally switching. Okay, no ally switch, no hacks. Goodbye. Let's go. We got our first KO in the finals. And we should do some damage with a uh, a mega horn. Snarl is very unfortunate. Very good move. Oh, I missed a mega horn! Oh, is that only move back 90% accurate? Oh. <laughs> I missed a mega horn. And Umbreon is here with the steel spike boosts. Seems like it might be able to 2v1 me, even if I beat both Pokemon back to back right here. Rotom. I'm required to protect. Do not have another option. So I can beat the Rotom with my other two turns of max. I'm calling his moves, but Umbreon's not exactly beatable. <laughs> yeah, so the second, Max Darkness, is a KO here. I can read a Protect, try to double in the Umbreon, bet it all for an unclear benefit here. Special defense drops on Umbreon are good, but this is looking like a loss. So he might forget the protect on the Rotom. Certainly possible, but a second Max Darkness is the KO here. Protect. 
it's a Scarf Rotom. It's a Scarf Rotom. All right, GG Zam. The Scarf Rotom. Leftovers, Umbreon, with boosts, unkillable. Oh my god, how did that? Because of the Snarl, okay. Umbreon. Oh, Umbreon. I can retaunt. I mean, Snarl, I lose. Like, lose unless I get crits. Um, but. Info. Minus two. How do I do this? Drowsy plus three, minus three. Um, I don't even know what I'm looking at. Is he taunted? I don't know if he's taunted. All right, so I use three turns of max so I can deduce that he's taunted, but I have to uh, taunt it. Come on. So he, he gets another full power overheat, so good move by Sam. Any Paris? Please give me Paris. No Paris. So I need a lot of Paris. <laughs> a lot of full paralysis here. Of course, I need to not go to sleep for an excessively long time. <sighs> what a torturously unfun move. Yawn is. Faster than, than Salamence. That's that's knowledge. We have a Dragon Pulse. Interesting. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Insult to injury here. GG Sam. So I don't have a, an alternative here. Um, my best option to beat Umbreon is um, Escavalier, and he lived two of them. Two of my, my, my best shot from Escavalier. Um, so I don't have an answer for Umbreon. The only thing I can do is um, prevent Metagross from scaling out of control, um, which I can do maybe with Thunderous Cottony. So I can eat his um, weakness policy with my lagging tail. So Thunderous in the lead now. But obviously there's mix-up potential here. Um, but, I, but I'm at pretty dire straits here, right? The game is lost to Umbreon unless I um, can call what he's doing pretty consistently. Because I made the right plays, right? Um, but... Or I made the right plays from the positions I was in, I just need to enter into a different position, if at all possible. So Thunderous Kodney, Orn Guru, Escav. So there's two rock weaknesses here. Um, throw is also good. Um, Oranguru is pretty useless against Umbreon. Um, go without throw again. Might go without Salamence. I'm gonna, think, I'm gonna use my time. Um, I probably have to Dynamax Thunderous on turn one. Max Darkness the Metagross. Now if it's ally switching, then he's wasted my max. Um, but but it, this is like a pretty dire situation here, not being able to beat the Umbreon, uh, even with multiple bonds. You know, how many attacks did I throw into it? Um, Horn Guru is useless. But throw an Escav with no attempts at, at speed control, besides a, a lagging tail. Ooh. So this is a very dubious plan. So just in case, I need to be able to set Trick Room later. 
Good luck, Sam. Yeah, six size but dude. I'm gonna go Salamence. Okay. So he doesn't have a super effective move from Salamence onto Thunderous. Period. Oh, and it's a special Salamence. Makes um, so special Salamence with fire um, makes uh, Escav a lot worse, which is something I would have should should have thought about. But uh, oh well. So I will be eating the Metagross weakness policy here. I'm taking it away. I hope I clicked the right thing. I really don't know. Um, I'm okay with the Dynamax Metagross. I'm not okay with the mix-up Salamence. Or I'm not okay with an ally switch. The ally switch is the main thing that really, really messes me up here. We shall see what happens. Dynamaxing Thunderous in both games. Didn't get two Dynamax Escav under Trick Room. I wonder if it would have made a difference. I imagine it doesn't, right? I don't have any moves stronger than two Meta Mega Horns. Is this a uh, Metagross? I mean, it certainly worked for him, so. Salamence. Okay, cool mix up. But Salamence is not that good against Thunderous. Yeah. Okay, so Salt Fest Cottony. I just destroyed my Cottony in the process. It cannot use a move besides Struggle. <laughs> So I have the speed advantage on Salamence because everything has the speed advantage on Salamence. I don't think uh, either are in a great shape against Oranguru, so I believe I will be setting Trick Room. I'm honestly happy that he went for Codney because it was useless. So Lagging Tail Salamence rather than Assault Vest, that's good. But I'm not going to be doing the Ally Switch game. If you want to win both games on the back of Ally Switch, like, be my goddamn guest. Like, I just, I'm not going to do that. Um, I kind of refuse to do that, so. Yachi Berry. Save me. 25%. 20%. Goodbye, Metagross. Out. So now my next attack on Salamence. Um, thunderous. Wow, big damage. Okay, so max warm wind. Um, Salamence. So I'm gonna maybe max Lightning to uh, stop Umbreon uh, yawns for a little bit. Seems pretty important. So I should be doing half, or I should be basically okoing it from full here, um, the Salamence. And uh, I need to keep my Thunderous alive by attacking the Salamence, which I know does not have Protect because it had it in Assault Vest. Um, so I'll be max Lightninging. Um, neither Rotom nor I benefit because we're not sitting on in terrain. Um, actually, I want more special defense drops. No, no, I got it. Let's do it. Um, it's the Umbreon that we're preparing for now. Ouch. Scarf Rotom, everybody. So this is a GG. Yeah, in sun, when I don't have the ability to change it back to rain. Yeah, so.
game's super over. <laughs> it's incredibly over. Heatwave and Sun. Oranguru is a very good Pokemon, so... Womp Womp. Didn't get to set Electric Terrain either, so it's even more over than it was. So I need to beat the Salamence, um, but if I don't beat the Umbreon, then I lose. <laughs> All right, so info. I don't have time to do a calc, unfortunately. Um, but I but I could see if for some reason Salamence with two with two with two drops is enough. Shouldn't have psychic. My mistake. <sighs> the tricky part is that I don't know how I can play it better. So in Sun, yes, yeah, so this is the last turn of the game. Maybe instruct Escav for two razor shells in Sun on Rotom. I forget what that does. Okay. Another very effective move. I don't think I have a chance, but if I do, I need to not go to sleep for a very long time. So can I 2v1 this Umbreon? Two turns of Trick Room, one turn of Sun. So he's got Moonlight. So there's a cohesive strategy here. Setting Sun, and then he taking advantage of it with Moonlight. Um, it's a cool strat, Sam. I wonder what it would happen to that ally switch. Just hard to say. This is, I guess, good chip damage. This is, I guess, his only uh, <laughs> attack. It's Snarl, Moonlight, Yawn. All right, can we not go to sleep for a long time? Can we please, please wake up? So I think I have a two-hit KO. No, I think I have like almost an, a full Oko here um, with Megahorn if I can just wake up. Come on, Escav! <laughs> Come on! <laughs> I might get a couple more chances, but if, if I can't handle a three turn sleeve. <laughs> so, no more sun. I might, if I just can hit Megahorn, still win this game. It's, it's certainly possible. So, I need to. I forget how instruct works here. I don't think it might just fail. I, I don't I don't know how instruct if uh because I attempted to go for Megahorn, but it didn't succeed. So how does that work? Would I be able to instruct it? The world may never know. Yeah, a three-turn sleep would be devastating <laughs> to my soul. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Umbreon, you devil, you devil, you. The weird thing is that we might still have a chance. How many more turns does he need to, to have? Sub, okay, cool sub. So he's banking on me missing a Megahorn so that he can bank a turn. It seems not necessarily worth it to me. Sub, yawn, moonlight, snarl. What a super toxic Umbreon. <laughs> All fair in Pokemon, of course. Mm. 
I'm really happy I added Mega Horn at the last moment. Okay, so 85% to win the game. Pew! Somehow, we pull a win out of sure defeat. <laughs> oh, man. I think to the viewers, I'm the protagonist of this one when this one gets streamed by uh, Steven Daddy. Um, hopefully folks in my corner here, but they don't want the Umbreon to win. Um, but never give up, right? I, I was feeling pretty close to uh, the game being 100% lost, but, you know, didn't make worse decisions, I don't think. So, uh, Salamence has... I'm gonna wait a teensy bit here. Um, Salamence has an Assault Vest. Metagross, I don't know its item, because I keep Okoing it, but I think it does have a weakness policy. Um, no, wait, why would it have a weakness policy necessarily? It doesn't have AV, it could have Lum. It probably just has a weakness policy, let's be honest. Um, because that's the, like, uh, just like, without thinking, you just put a weakness policy on Metagross and it can do really well. Um, but I'm gonna bring the throw. Give me a secondary option that can almost sort of handle the Umbreon. I do think we'll see an adjustment. Um, from Sam. If he adjusts the Seismitoad, then I might actually win this whole thing. Um, because I have not revealed a uh, grass move on Thunderous yet. Fortunately, all, uh, in uh, Showdown, all of the stats are right um, in front of you. Uh, and so I can see if I've shown the, the grass move. I don't think I have. I don't think I've, sh think I've even shown an electric move yet. But it's Thunderous, Oranguru, Throw, and a Scavalier. We will feel out our spot, and we may not dy uh, Dynamax the Thunderous, because I think we need to Dynamax the Escav, because uh, in Sun, we've hella lost this whole game. <laughs> Good luck, have fun, Sam, for the final time of the VBLS Season 4 VGC Draft League. Surprise throw, what you gonna do about throw? I want him to Dynamax the Seismitoad and for me to Oko that thing. Really badly, that's what I want. But he doesn't really have a reason to switch it up, right? The way his team is constructed versus mine, he has the advantage, I think, which is very well played um, on Sam X's part. I, I think I, I often just go for a discharge here. He probably expects a Dynamax here. Assault Vest Salamence is going to be hard to beat. Um, okay, so we have a fake tears Meowstic. So fake tears plus Dynamax Salamence. Oko is my Oranguru, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. I'm going to try to get some Paras, because I think it's our only way to win this game. So he doesn't have a Taunt on that Meowstic. He's a fake Tears, like I can call that, with like 95% confidence. Whether or not he plays that, he could fake out the, the Oranguru, which I don't know. Oh, is that a Moxie Salamence? Moxie with a self vest, cool. Um, so he didn't intimidate me, so he does not know whether I'm in or focus. So he's going to fake Tears, Dynamax, I'm going to lose my Oranguru, and I'm going to get some chip damage on the other two. And so I'm going to be very behind because I'm stuck with two slow Mons with no attempts to speed control. Wow. So Umbreon? Umbreon. Wow. Wow. Okay, so he goes for the hacks. 25% of the time I get fully parried, and I don't get to set Trick Room. The other, the other times, I'm in pretty good shape, actually. Please give me a parrot. It's 30% on each of them. Just give me one. On the Umbreon. Okay, we can we can take that. Um, thank you for no para. So I can. So our Urungru's going first here, unless Meowstic does prankster stuff. Um, I can do two discharges here. With Instruct. And I hope that Urungru doesn't get para paralyzed because the second discharge is going to mean a lot for me, I think. I forget the speed tearing um, between Umbreon and uh, Oranguru. I don't think it changes the equation too much. Um, I mean, I, I mainly need Umbreon to be paralyzed. Fake tears. There it is. Interesting, so he's going to try to chunk down the Oranguru. Umbreon is slower than Oranguru. So that should be a goodbye to Meowstic, and I think I need to switch out into Throw or Escav. Take advantage of, a, of, of two, two Trick Room turns.
So the first of the four Trick Room turns I spent discharging, and it was very, very effective, as it turned out. Um, but I need to avoid getting put to sleep. Um, it all kind of depends on what is in front of me here. Salamence. Or Rotom. Rotom's very strong. Um, I think Rotom's his last one. Oh, I, I, okay, I missed the, the, the heads up. So it's Intimidate. And he knows that I'm not in a focus. Um, he probably just didn't have Fake Out on the Meow Stick. I feel, I just, uh, with Dynamax, sometimes it can just be a little bit too dangerous to switch out. You give up a fair amount of momentum. But if I swap into Throw, I likely eat a Dynamax turn of his that's like Dragon. Um, and I like that. So this is a big risk. It likely doesn't have a huge amount of upside, but I just don't want to be uh, put to sleep. I like that he swapped out, right? Because uh, then he's not snarling me. <laughs> um, but I really didn't want to be put to sleep. Now I could have Dynamax um, Electric, that would've been kinda cool, um, but I don't know how that would've fared. Now he didn't Dynamax, which is nice patience on his part. Okay, so he's, he's, uh, he's here in, in case of potential uh, SCAF switches. Um, so I need to look at my speed tiering because our Angry being paralyzed means he instructs first, which means I can't do two rock slides uh, info. I don't know how to look at the, the at his stats. Um, so I got 45 on this, and I've got 44, 44 and a half. I literally, I could have thought about this. Um, I mean, maybe I could have thought about this. I don't know if I could have thought about this. Um, but we shall psychic instead. It's probably nearly as effective as throws attack. Into Umbreon with a Dynamax Metagross. No, I'm gonna lose to Umbreon again. Umbreon with Steel Spikes. Okay, so I need to start coaching up. I need to do coaching um, into Oranguru as Oranguru switches into Escav. Um, and so I just have to take advantage of the fact that, uh, no, but I still lose the Salamence in the back. Um, this is looking really, really, really bad. Throw should tank this. So here's the thing, I crit through Umbreon. So if I beat the Umbreon here, hold on, I crit right through these Steel Spike boosts, and we have one more turn of, of... All right, so he's going first, though, is the problem. He can Moonlight. Yeah, so I, I have to hope that he doesn't Moonlight. The game is hope that he doesn't Moonlight. Moonlight, Moonlight, Moonlight. Oh, man. He doesn't Moonlight there. I might win the whole game because I don't have to deal with Umbreon anymore. Just does half. Oh my god, throw, you're so good. You're very, very, very good, throw. <laughs> so this is the end of Trick Room, if I've done my counts correctly. Um, so he really needs to stop the Trick Room. I don't know exactly how... Oh, so, yeah, Metagross here. for the chance that if I get the Trick Room for some reason, then I can coach. Now, the paralysis on Umbreon worked against me, unfortunately. Somehow take it. Oh my god, Orangaroo. Oh my god, Orangaroo. 
What are you doing? These, these mons are so good at defense. And Citrus might save me from Snarl. It might save me from Snarl. Okay. Come on. Please don't para. Let's get a real game here. We don't want this to be side by hacks. Real para. There we go. Oranguru, you're so good. You're so good. Now, Trick Room is of dubious helpfulness here. Um, but <laughs> I need to coach into the Escav, um, which I'm swapping in for Oranguru. And I need to win promptly because Sal before Trick Room ends, because um, Salamence can easy Oko me with um, a Heat Wave. I have, thunder I have a Thunderous in the back. Hold on, this is not so bad. I thought Thunderous died. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. Um, but I preserved the Thunderous extremely well. Um, got it out of there when things were bad. I have to ignore this Umbreon. Um, and this is what I've warned Sam, is, is that Umbreon can be ignored in some situations. Um, now, Yawn is the main thing that makes it very incredibly hard to ignore. Um, so I need to be pretty worried about Dynamaxing uh, uh, Escaf. I might need to Dynamax Thunderous and get Electric Drain up. Calc time. Because if I double up into Metagross, then I might be able to beat it with a Max Electric and a Megahorn. I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. Um, thunderous. Um, I actually think that I that I KO with the double up here. So I Dynamax the Thunderous under Trick Room, despite the fact that uh, Escavalier has a coaching boost because I need Max Lightning in order to prevent Umbreon from auto-winning this whole game. Now, I could have waited a turn. I'm not sure exactly what waiting a turn gets me. It might, that might have been better, but there's not really enough time to fully consider all the options here. You gotta come in with the team you came with. Okay, so Yawn will not do anything after I set Electric to Rain. Now what I could potentially have done was Max Darkness this turn. So it eats my Yachi. 20%. Let's go, Thunderous, in Electric Terrain, with a surprise Dynamax, three turns. There are three, uh, three out of three games. Um, so Escavalier is just too much of a liability with uh, Salamence, with Intimidate, and a Fire move lurking in the back. I'm happy this turned to be, have to be a good set. I'm, I, I, I have no idea if I can win this, um, but uh, I'm okay with losing this way um, because I know his team now, he knows my team, and it just comes down to plays. This is my strongest move against that thing. Now I wonder if doubling the Salamence, which does not have Protect, is my move this game. And I get a chance of flinches, which is pretty good. Now a swap into Rotom would be very good here. Hold on. Do I give up some damage to get a special defense drop onto that Umbreon? That's the question. And it would do better. Oh my god, I'm running out of time. Please tell me I locked in. Okay, so I covered for a Rotom switch in. S Cavalier! Let's go! So I'm not actually protected from Yawn because Thunderous is not an electric terrain. Don't tell Sam, everybody, um, that I'm protected from Yawn. Now, he might know it. Uh, he might have gone for a Yawn on the Thunderous there. Um, but Salamence is gone. Metagross is gone. Rotom is likely here as the fourth member. No, Meowstic is gone. 
It's a two. It's a three v one. It's a three v one, and I, I have another turn. Hold on. Let's make sure I have my Pokemon right. Um, Pokemon. Um, Oranguru is there in the back, paralyzed. Um, I think the special defense drop is so good for my long-term health that I I'm gonna go for it, even if it's resisted. Good snarl. One health for the Escavalier. Let's go, Escav. Oh my God, we, we, are we, I feel like we're in decent shape here. Because Escav, oh, in the miss, that would break the sub. I don't even know if I break the sub here with a minus one max darkness Umbreon. So Umbreon here is slower than my Escavalier while parried. So the speed investment on Escavalier worked against me, which is sad, um, but here's what we do. No, he just has to snarl. He has nothing to do except snarl. Um, I can't divert any of his attention. So if he's stuck just snarling, you no, know, so the taunt is just too good here. Um, I really, I will, I will, I hope I do not regret misplaying this end game. Electric Terrain, two more turns. Um, two Spidef drops. Um, so Discharge is, is my best move, and for that reason, I'm going to protect the Escav. I'm not KO myself. So we're not under Trick Room if I've paid attention to everything in time. That should break the stop. I mean, come on. He's, he's got halved special defense because I've dropped it twice. Um, yeah. Snarl, unless he's parried. Okay, good snarl. I'm playing the 3v1 here. So either the Umbreon can clutch a 3v1. I don't even want to think about what happens if Umbreon can't clutch the 3v1. I gotta just win this game. Um, I can swap into Oranguru. So here's the thing, I'm going first with the Scavalier now. Hold on. Taunt. Ping, Mega Horn. Nobody's it's got steel spikes. That's that's the thing that makes this challenging. So I discharge. So for the for the later in the game, Escavalier will have a chance to throw one Mega Horn. And for that reason, I would like to preserve it just a little bit longer. So, so speed on Escav? Speedy Escav is now is now working out. Oh my god. Umbreon. Hold on, I can swap out Thunderous now. And if I lose, no, but I think Escav's my safest bet. It has it has steel spike boosts. So is it Thunder Thunderous to beat this? Or is it Escav to beat this? Three. Oh God. I have to give up Thunderous now. No, I'm gonna go for the discharges. I, I don't know what I'm doing. I have to go for Para. I think I might have lost this. I don't know how. I don't know how to win this now because he's got Steel Spike boost. Two minutes left until battle ends, oh my god. Come on, Umbreon. I think I lose, unless I get a crit with Megahorn. Or Umbreon uh, snarls. Or uh, Umbreon gets parried. So I'm supposed to do... Hold on. This might be the same calc as last game. If he's got two seal spike boosts, I might actually still clutch it. I really don't even know. There's no, there's no choice except to hit the Mega Horn and see if we win with one HP Escavalier. So of course there's a 15% chance that I miss the Mega Horn, which by the way I already missed the Mega Horn. Come on. Come on, Para. Oh my God. <laughs> GG's to Sam Max. Jesus, the Samax. What a game. What a game.
I'm okay with losing that way. I can I can I can analyze the end game um, another time. But if I just didn't miss the mega horn, if I just got a higher roll, I think pretty sure that that was down to a roll. Um, who knows? Um, but congratulations to Samax, the VBLS Season Four champion. Um, we'll debrief this team. This team was massively strong uh, that I had here. Um, not this six specifically, but the uh, uh, the eleven man roster overall, eleven mon roster. I was very, very, very strong, um, and it's definitely a recipe for success in, in draft league in general. Um, but hopefully it was good content for y'all. Uh, it, it turned out to be an exciting game, and that's really what you want. Um, you want an exciting content, even if it doesn't always turn out your way. I'll see you next time.